Hey guys, attachment specialist Adam Lane Smith here, and today I need to talk to you about a painful reality. There are seriously successful men finding their finances at the mercy of a failed marriage. A substantial percentage of divorced men that I talk to feel the weight of half of their income being pulled away. Now this impact can eviscerate your life's work. It can even leave successful men feeling miserable in their otherwise solid life. I hate the stories of my male clients that come in and tell me about how they were stripped of their life's work by an unfaithful partner who took the cash and left them behind the moment that their marriage wasn't satisfying enough. Those stories are horrible and it does not have to happen. With the right awareness of risks and how to manage relationship dynamics for the security of all involved, you can build a romantic connection that does not risk your assets. Now, this is not a video based on fear, how to be tactical, how to control the other partner. That's been done to death all over the internet, and that's mostly what is presented. Today, I want to show you simple guidelines that you can follow all the time in every situation that will show you how to not just avoid the bad, but build the good. This is the 80-20 principle. By doing this 20%, you will get 80% of the work done in a relationship. If you avoid this 20%, 80% of the relationship will go catastrophically wrong. That is what I'm offering you today is the 80-20 principle in your relationship. So if you are looking for very successful, loving, warm relationships where you celebrate your 20th wedding anniversary on a beach with a fortune in the bank and you have built it together and it's only getting better as you go. If that's what you want and you want to avoid having half of your life's work taken from you halfway to that mark, this is the video for you. Now, shout out to all my members who support this channel. Thank you for being here and for stepping up and supporting this message. And for all my new viewers who are here, welcome. I am glad you are here. Let me show you a little bit about me and why I am qualified to speak on this. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist. I worked for years as a licensed marriage and family therapist, which was a nine year process of schooling and apprenticeship. Nine years to become that. I worked with individuals. I worked with families. I worked with couples. I also worked in family court situations in custody battles, and I am dedicated to helping men and women build strong, loving, romantic relationships based on all of my experience and research. Now, the number one thing I want you to know is this. Love and romance is not a dice roll. Let's not live in fear that we are going to get blindsided. Instead, I am going to show you the solution that gets you that 80-20 a sustainable, loving, romantic relationship that does not lead to divorce or loss, but fulfillment and happiness for you and as a couple. Let's get right into it and figure this out. Now, I've got some shocking numbers to share with you here today that I've collected. This is the alarming statistics about the average cost of divorce, how they vary, and how bad it can get for you. I'm not here to scare you, but I want you to understand the real risks because Divorce is consistently high. Now, I've got personal stories of clients losing millions of dollars, homes, peace of mind, everything. I had one guy with a $9 million prenup on the line. I had another guy with a $100 million business that was about to be gutted. I've had so many clients whose marriages fell apart and their finances fell apart, and I had to help them pick up afterward. They called me in too late. But I want to show you this, the crippling weight of, of average child support, alimony, all of those dire situations, okay? The average cost of a divorce is $10,000 in rural areas. That's just the divorce. If there's no custody battles, no alimony, just divvying up assets, cutting apart your 401ks, anything you have built together, $10,000 lost average in rural areas. Now in New York, the average cost is $17,000 with no kids, and it's an average cost of $25,000 with kids. 25 grand average with kids. Now keep in mind, for every couple who just easily separates and pays almost nothing, there's couples paying $100,000. Now, that's just the divorce itself, you guys. That's not even all the other pieces that get added into it. Filing the divorce, managing the divorce, hiring the lawyers, all of that bare minimum right there, okay? 10 grand rural, 17K in places like New York. Now, the average 
this is the average for blue collar families, by the way, people who make maybe $60,000 a year. Can you imagine paying a sixth of your yearly income just to separate? And that's the base minimum just to navigate it. Now this can go up to a hundred thousand dollars, sometimes more, depending on how much you have to divvy up. Some of my clients, millions of dollars in losses. The highest, like I said, was a $9 million prenup and two houses. Now, the average child support yearly that people pay here is $5,000 in the U.S. per child. For one child, five grand a year. That's actually pretty low. And again, that is factoring in average child support, even for couples who pay maybe $10, maybe $20. They can afford almost nothing, but the state pulls pieces out, right? It's a jailable offense, by the way, for not paying. So if you're making 60 grand and you're now covering one twelfth of your money is now cut out into child support. It's going to be a lot more than that, by the way, that's, it's, it's not going to be 12%. It's not going to be one twelfth. It's going to be brutal. An alimony payment, an average of 40% of your yearly income, 40% of your yearly income that does not cover the divorce cost. That does not cover child support. Okay. So the average is 40%. So imagine if you make about $75,000 a year. Okay. You pay about 30% or about 40%. That is going to be 30 K in alimony. Let's say you pay 5 K in child support for a single child. Let's say you were married to somebody for one year. You're now paying half of your income, half of your income. Okay. One child. You have two children, more than half, three children. You're getting a lot there. Suddenly, suddenly. You have no money. And remember, it's a jailable offense not to follow through on these. Suddenly you go from, wow, I make 75K a year. That's pretty decent. We live in a house to I am below the poverty line. You go from a house with your family into a studio apartment in subsidized housing, eating nothing but groceries from Walmart or the gas station. And a lot of times you won't get to see your kids. You're going to go to jail if you don't comply with these finances. And you don't get to see your kids because you didn't afford, you couldn't afford the lawyer to buy, fight your custody battle for you. Now, and this incentivizes the other person to never get married or work because if they get married, their income goes up and you don't have to pay them alimony. Their income goes up and you don't have to pay them as much child support. If they never get married, instead, what do they do? They just have a cycle of live-in boyfriends who now live with your children, who see your kids more than you do and who pay for them to live. So they get the income, but they don't go on the paperwork. You're over there. You can't even afford a lawyer. This is where most guys fall apart. They can't even afford a lawyer anymore because you're living below the poverty line in subsidized housing. How are you going to pay a lawyer to fight for you in family court? Now guys, this is the financial toll, but the emotional toll. I had one client, one client came into me. He was a young man. And he said, I always thought my dad hated me. My dad, my parents got divorced and my dad moved away. And my mom told us he didn't love us anymore. And that he wouldn't financially provide for us. And that he just, he was a bad father. And I resented him. And he, I, I wouldn't speak to him. He'd call me, he'd text me, and I wouldn't respond. And he died in a car accident. And I begrudgingly went over to his apartment to help clean. And when I walked in, it was a studio apartment in a crappy part of town. There was one chair in the living room. He couldn't even afford a sofa. There was a chair and a TV and a little table. And on the table was a framed picture of me and him when I was a little kid. It was the only picture in the apartment. Guys, the alienation, alienation from your parent, from your kids. The struggles of starting over financially, of not even being able to, because now your income's gone and you're living in poverty when you worked so hard for more. That suffocating feeling of being cornered by legalities. The costs of divorce are too high for anybody to pay. This is not to scare you. This is not like everybody else on the internet. Costs of divorce are too high, so stay away from it. Never get married. That's not the goal here. I want to show you how to get married with confidence, knowing this will not happen. I'm going to show you that. 
because there is one main issue that I have seen in all my 15 years of experience and training, one main issue again and again that causes this. Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. It is not a dice roll. It is not Russian roulette. You are not just playing the odds. There are ways to reduce those risks all the way down. One problem ruins relationships and leads to divorce. Every divorce I ever saw and ever treated as a therapist and now as a coach had this one thing in common. And unfortunately, most couples therapists don't hear about this one thing because it's not emphasized in school. I wish it was. We're starting to talk about it more. I'm going to teach you about it today so you will know. This is called attachment theory. Now, the theory of attachment says this. When you grow up, you learn how to work with other humans. You either learn you are unworthy of love or that others won't trust you or others won't be fair with you or others won't care about you or that others are unreliable. And you have to learn to be tactical either from a position of weakness or a position of strength or your parents teach you that you can be loved and that you can ask and you can work and you can solve problems together and you can be calm and the other people will do the same. And you learn to filter other people carefully. And you learn to work with other people and test them. And you learn to build trust and build loyalty and connect to people who are self-policing in relationships so that you don't have to police them, that they won't turn on you. So that even if you have fights, it doesn't go to divorce. So that even if it ever did somehow go to divorce, they wouldn't gut you for fun. Flawed attachments spell disaster for relationships, you guys. 50% of people are now estimated to have broken attachment. Roughly 50% of all marriages fall apart into divorce. It's actually less than that. It's about one third of first marriages fall apart into divorce, about 35%. Still not a great stat. But with 50% attachment issues out there of people incapable of working honestly and lovingly in relationships, so resentment and silence builds until they tear the relationship apart, do you think that could be correlated with that attachment issue and the divorce rate? Because I sure as hell do. Now, it's made worse by this following concern. Social pressures. The world pressures people, and especially men in these situations, with societal expectations and legal ramifications through the roof. I hear time and again, women are incentivized to ruin you. And unfortunately, it's true. What is not said is that the number of women who are willing to gut you is a problem. Certainly not all women. Certainly not. Not any more than it's all men who commit assault, right? But enough that people are afraid. Enough that people were raised with parents who did this to each other. Here's the good news. Attachment issues are not set in stone. Not for you and not for the other people. This video is not teaching you how to be afraid. I'm trying to teach you how to be smart. How to beat the odds by not playing the game. That means managing risks properly by working on attachment. You need to understand your own attachment style. Where do you come from in relationships? What marriage did you grow up in? You grew up in a marriage, even if they never spoke and were not married, you grew up in a family dynamic that was screwed up, maybe, but you were still in one. I was in a family dynamic where they only got together because blank. Okay. I got in a family dynamic where they hit each other all the time. I got in a family dynamic where they used drugs. I got in a family dynamic where we never spoke about problems. We were expected to handle them alone. I grew up in a family dynamic where we paid bills together, but we didn't hug. Affection was off the table. I grew up in a family dynamic where they were separated at my birth and I never saw my other parent. Where did you grow up in? What did you learn? The skills you learned were to survive in that environment. This is why the research shows that married couples raise the healthiest children. Now, a secure attachment where you grow up with parents who nurture you, who are both there and listen to you and say, you have a problem. Talk to me about it. Let's solve it together. Okay, you're mad at me. That's okay. You can have a feeling. Let's talk through it. I'm not going to shut you down. I'm not going to yell at you. Let's solve things together as a couple, as a family. Let's work together. And they mean it. 
and they follow through on it and they're consistent with it. If you grew up in that, you have what's called secure attachment style and you expect that from other people. And when you don't get it, you say, Hey, I'm not putting up with this. What are you doing? Let's work together. No, we can't work together. It's impossible. No, it's not. Thank you. And goodbye. Securely attached people don't tend to marry insecurely attached people because they know better is possible. So they just keep looking till they find a securely attached person. A lot of them sort out of the dating pool much earlier and then stay happily married. That two thirds of people who stay happily married, most of them have secure attachment. Yes, yeah, some of them are barely scraping by and stay married for the kids. But a vast majority of people who have successful marriages comes from secure attachment style. The research is clear on this. It's one of the biggest factors in avoiding divorce because everything else good comes from secure attachment. Good communication, good problem solving, good conflict resolution, good intimacy, good trust, and you avoid affairs. Secure attachment is the bedrock of a resilient relationship. If you want to avoid being, being gutted in a divorce, but also want to build an incredible relationship, 80-20, secure attachment is the 20% that gets you the 80% outcome. So at this point, you're probably saying, all right, Adam, yeah, 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 I, I hear you. I think that secure attachment could probably work. I need to hear more. Okay, how do you look for secure attachment in the other person? Because secure attachment in the other person is just as important as secure attachment in you. I've got millions of, of resources out here just about to show you how to find secure attachment in yourself. But how do you scan for it in somebody else? All right. Constant communication and consistent communication. Are they clear with you about what they need, what their problems are, what their thoughts are, what their goals are, what their desires are? Are they contacting you at the beginning and talking with you and being clear? Hey, you know what? I want to hold off on a physical relationship till I make sure we're compatible. How do you feel about that? Hey, you know what? I'm looking for a long-term committed relationship. I'm not really looking for a little fling. What are you thinking about that? Hey, you know what? I really like you. I would love to have a second date with you. They're clear with you from the beginning about what they want. And this weaves into the relationship where they are still clear with you in the relationship. Hey, we're having this problem here. I'd love to solve it with you. How can we do this? Open, consistent communication. Mutual respect during disagreements. They calmly talk with you. They don't call you names. They don't insult you. They don't shut you down. They listen and they say, okay, that's how you feel. Okay, let's deal with that, right? I respect your feeling. Even if I don't agree with, with what you're saying, I respect that you feel it. Let's manage that. And they listen. They don't fall apart into attacking and defending. It's respect, mutual respect. Empathetic understanding. I want to understand how you feel. Talk with me and help me understand how you feel so I can help you feel better. They want you to feel at home with them. Not good enough so they can get things from you. It's mutual. Shared long-term goals. Are they clear about what they want and do they talk about that with you? And then do you build plans to get there? Securely attached people look at the long-term. It's the left side brain, logical thinking brain on the left, long-term thinking. Short-term thinking brain on the right, five seconds into the future, maximize pleasure, minimize pain. This is the hallmark of people with attachment issues. When a conflict hits, they default to maximize pleasure, minimize pain in the next five seconds. So are you doing long-term goals and are you both focusing on building them? The next one and the last one is regular check-ins on the relationship health. People with attachment issues have this weird belief that if you ever ask about the health of the relationship, the other person is going to say, you know, I didn't think about this before, but our relationship sucks. I'm breaking up with you right now on the spot and I wouldn't have if you hadn't asked me. It's this weird, irrational belief. But when I talk to people, when I was a marriage and family therapist, and now as a coach, I say, when was the last time you asked your partner, hey, how do you feel in our relationship? And how can we make you feel more at home? No, I can't ask that. Why? You damn well better ask that. Check in with each other and then solve the problems you find when they're this big, instead of waiting for them to be this big and they're blowing up in your face. Solve the problems when they're little, you guys. This right here is your partner doing these things. Are you doing these things? These five pieces, this is what you've got to do to check for secure attachment. And if you don't do these five things, you are headed for a nasty divorce and that ugly studio apartment with a chair and a picture frame of your kids that you miss. If you do these five things, you are headed for a beach at 20 years of marriage, lounging in the sand, more in love than you've ever been because you've solved all your problems together and life is easy. It's one or the other. Which one do you want? Build it.
be proactive, you guys. Here's a couple proactive steps you can take right now. If I'm selling you on this, and I hope you are, here's what you can do. Discuss relationship goals openly and from day one. If you didn't discuss them on day one, now is the second best time. Focus on building those goals rather than breaking things down, right? I want to build this with you for life. I want to build this relationship. That's our goal. Let's focus on it. What do you want? Talk about it. Build a shared vision. Second thing you could do proactively, implement regular relationship check-ins or meetings to gauge the emotional health and connection. Don't be afraid and don't shy away from this because you will just get blindsided. That's how you get blindsided later, you guys. Check in and make sure you're with a partner who's going to be honest with you during those check-ins, not someone who's going to smear over it and say everything's fine until five years in you discover that they hate you. Check-ins solve problems. Do it. And the third thing you can proactively do is treat the relationship as a continuously evolving partnership throughout the course of your life. I have a great friend who tells me all the time, every couple on earth right now has two different streams of data coming into their phones in different rooms, both learning and being propagandized by different things. They need to be aware of that and working on it together to keep bringing their vision of the world back to each other so they don't grow apart. Are you doing that in this world? Are you treating a relationship like it's continuously evolving? Or did you check a box when you got together and said, all right, great, that's sorted. Now I can focus on other stuff. Continuously evolving and growing. Do that. Incredibly important that you do this. Guys, make your relationship a priority. Set aside some time right now, if you're in a relationship, to discuss your relationship goals, to ensure that both of you have aligned visions. Instill that practice of weekly relationship evaluations once a week, guys, one, once a week, even just as one would review a business's progress. So too should the relationship be assessed and nurtured. Check in once a week, Sundays, Sunday nights, me and my wife love to do this. Hey, we sit down on the couch, we settle in, we have an old movie on, maybe die hard or something like that. And we say, all right, tell me about you. How you doing? Where are you at? Where are you at in the relationship? How are you feeling right now? How are you feeling in our marriage? How can I help you feel more at home? What do you need? What do you need in the coming week? What do you need for success? What are you aiming for in the next week? Tell me about you. Both partners have responsibility for this, you guys. Both partners. It cannot work with just one of you pulling, right? You got a coach behind you and your two horses pulling. If one horse is just standing there and the other one is pulling as hard as they can, what do you think is going to happen? Well, one horse is going to die, probably, if they don't quit pulling. And the coach is going nowhere. Both partners are equally responsible to attend and engage and be proactive during these sessions, these check-ins. Have those session check-ins, you guys. Number one thing I can tell you right there. Biggest change is session check-ins. When couples stop doing that, that's when they come back to me panicking and say, Adam, I don't know what went wrong. Our marriage is awful and we're fighting again. Yeah, are you guys checking in? Well, no, well, it's been about two months since we did that. You better do that. They implement it, good again. It's amazing how fast it works. I just have to tell them, hey, when was the last time you did a check-in? Do one. <laughs> Easiest three minutes ever. These steps, guys, require secure attachment to work, though. It's really hard to do this without being securely attached. If you really believe your partner is going to screw you and stab you in the back, really hard to do these pieces. So... If you're stuck on that process, the attachment boot camp video course that I've created or my coaching, I can help make this happen for you and fix your attachment for you. That is so much cheaper than the cost of the divorce. Where's that paper? It's so much cheaper than that hundred thousand dollars or the $8 million or your house or living for the next 10 years in a studio apartment with your kids hating you. It is so much cheaper to hire somebody to show you how to build a loving relationship that gets you to a rocking chair and you're 90 years old, you're holding hands, you're rocking, you're seeing your family and your kids play out on your lawn, and it's Christmas and everybody is happy together. So much easier to make it work right now. So please make it work right now. <laughs> invest in your family, invest in your future, and take those steps to become secure. And follow the action course that I put out in this video here today. Have those meetings, you guys. By being proactive and by understanding your attachment styles, you can reclaim control over your relationship's future. Now, successful relationships are built on mutual respect, understanding, and shared goals. Secure attachment is the foundation for all of those things. So by being informed and being vigilant together, 
You can navigate the complex world of your relationship without falling into those muddy pits of financial and emotional devastation. Remember, a secure relationship is the best defense against potential perils of a failed marriage. So do not wait for cracks to appear. Fortify your bond now. Become bulletproof. Learn about attachment. Be proactive. And let love and understanding be the pillars of your relationship. Secure your future today. And if you need my help doing that, drop me a comment below and let me know that you're looking for some help. I will read it and I will be there. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, and I help make relationships bulletproof. And if you want to build secure attachment as soon as possible, I will see you in this next video, how to master your attachment style. See you there.